This is part six of the Craftsman King Sealy 100 Drill Press Conversion Rebuild Series. If you haven't seen part five, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we're going to be priming, masking, painting, and removing the mask. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. The first thing I'm gonna be doing is masking the head unit or the head casting. Now, Sometimes I will go ahead and clean these bores out with a bottle brush ahead of time and sometimes I'll wait until the painting's done and then do it then. Uh, that way I can remove any uh, primer or paint that may have gotten under the masking tape because that happens every once in a while. But uh, in this case, I'm going to do all the bore cleaning after the fact. So... Really, this is just going to be a few minutes of me applying masking tape to the various parts. On the head unit, there's a lot of bores, and all of them have to get masked. Basically, we're going to mask everything that's either going to be bare metal, like the table surface or the bores in the head unit, or anything that's going to have uh, oil placed on it, uh, because there's no reason for it to get paint then. And, you know, this isn't really exciting. There's just cutting tape to fit these various bores, getting it to it here and there, and then coming back with an X-Acto knife to clean that up. Now, I'm going to be painting this drill press with two different colors. So uh, after we shoot the first color, I'm going to come back and I'm going to paint the second color, but we're going to have to do some masking in between. Regardless, typically when I paint something, uh, we prime it and then we paint it and I'll let that paint dry for about an hour, maybe two hours, depending on humidity. And then I come back and remove the masking and then I let that unit or whatever that item is continue to cure for the next day or two. So I found that if you wait too long to remove the masking, like once everything is already cured and dried, Sometimes pulling that masking tape off can take some of the paint with it. Now that shouldn't happen if you're using a good primer and I use a metal etching primer, but I've seen it happen on occasion. So that's why I remove the masking as soon as I'm capable of doing so without damaging the paint job. So here we are at the table and uh, on a couple of occasions, I've forgotten to do this initial step, which is to cover these uh, holes up that are in the table with tape and then mask off the table surface. Um, and the reason I do that is because I spray pretty heavily with my paint and it will just bleed right through those holes and onto the table surface after the fact. And then when I remove that masking on top, if I didn't mask over those holes, I'll have a lot of paint or primer on the table itself. So that's why I do that. And the paper I'm using is just wax paper. Uh, you could use any paper. It really doesn't matter, but um, I like the wax paper. So that's the table finished. And you can see I've even masked off the boss for the, uh, for the lock pin. So this is the table support. You've got a couple of bores here, and then you've got that, uh, the, the actual support itself that sticks off of the column that the table will then slide onto. It kind of functions like a column for the table, and it's not going to get painted, so it'll get masked as well. And masking that lip down there is kind of the, the hard part of this. 
Um, but that lip is going to ride up against a milled surface on the back side of the table, so it needed to get masked as well. But really not that difficult. Uh, this is one of the end frames for the motor. This is the terminal end. And there's a milled surface where the uh, felt covers go. So I'm just going to cut that out, and then I'll cut out the center of it. And then I've got some some old, like, half-inch thick foam floor mats that I cut into these plugs and shoved them into the bore for the bearings on each one of these end frames. And that does a good job of masking that so I don't have to line it with tape. And I could probably do that for the head unit as well. I just never got around to it. So once I've got the end frames done, this is the floor base, and it's got three bores inside that uh, where the column gets inserted. So all three of those bores are going to get masked off. And I'm trying to use the minimum amount of tape necessary to mask the bore. I don't want the tape to rise too high or below each one of those bores because I want to be able to paint the cast iron between those bores uh, to prevent, you can see all that rust that's still in there even after we've de-rusted this thing. And I don't want it to get all rusty on the bores. So as much of that that I can paint and protect, I want to do so. And on the base, it's just those three bores that are going to get masked initially. When we go to paint that second color, we'll do some additional masking. So this is that metal etching primer. I've got a couple of pieces hanging there from the motor. That's the air cone and the uh, capacitor cover, the switch guard, and the terminal cover. And I almost always paint that stuff first. That way, if anything's messed up with the paint, if it comes out splotchy or anything like that, or there's any debris left on the items, I can strip it off of those small parts and get that squared away easier than I could on one of the big pieces of cast iron. But once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and do the table first. So I'm just spraying the uh, primer up inside that board to get as much of that area as I can. And then I'm going to... So when it's a piece like this, I'll prime half of it, let that dry, and then come back and flip it over and prime the other half of it. And most of your big pieces are going to get, well, pretty much all your pieces are going to get done this way. The primer only takes about 15 minutes, depending on humidity, to dry. You could shoot paint on it at that point, but... Uh, I've gotten to the point now where I let it sit for probably about a half an hour to an hour before I come back and flip it and paint the other side with primer. And so now we're doing the, uh, the end frames for the motor and the table support and the base for the motor. And this is the base for the drill press, the floor base. So the big thing with the uh, floor base is you've got a lot of angles down there, especially on the underside. So you just got to keep moving it around. Having that lazy Susan that I rest all this stuff on when I'm painting it uh, really, really helps out so that you can get all these different angles. And the same is true when we come back and shoot the paint. the head unit and since there's a lot of areas inside that head unit that are hard to get to I'll do the inside of it first as much as I can and then I'll shoot the outside that way if I get any uh, runs due to how thick I'm spraying it around the edge like that there I can just wipe that off and then when I come back and shoot the outside 
I'll put on enough primer there that it'll it'll remove my my finger print, if you will, of uh, me wiping that. So once everything has dried for about a half an hour or to an hour, I'll come back and shoot, flip everything over and shoot it again with the primer on the side that didn't have primer before. And that's the uh, motor mount. And here we are shooting the other side of the motor components, the base and the two end frames. So for one drill press, I'll probably go through three or four cans of this primer. I put it on pretty thick. But like I said, it's a Rust-Oleum metal etching primer. Really the cheapest place to get it is in the automotive section at Walmart. Keep finding lint from when I wiped all this stuff down with the rag. All right, so now we're ready to shoot the paint. And I'll shoot the bottom side of most things first and then come back and shoot the top side. That way, if, if anything gets damaged or marred up from sitting correctly with the bottom facing down, that'll happen after I've shot the uh, the top side. So the paint that we're using on this drill press is not like the paints that I've used before. Uh, this time I'm using a color called Champagne Mist. It's a Rust-Oleum metallic paint and primer all in one. And, and if you want to know, it is uh, paint number 261415. And this is the closest color to the OEM uh, power bronze color that Craftsman used. So for all the, all the tools that I keep myself, I paint them with a metallic gold, a hammered gold finish from Rust-Oleum. But on this one, I'm going to be selling it. So I wanted to get it to look as much as like factory with my twist on it, I guess, because I'm going to paint a second color as well. And here we are with the head unit. Like I said, spray the inside first. And then we'll shoot the outside. Now for this paint, I'll let these items cure for probably a day, if not two, sometimes even three, before I flip it like I've done here. So this is a day and a half later. Uh, then I'll shoot this side of it. And I could probably be a lot more accurate with an airbrush, but spray paint is easy, it's inexpensive, and it's what most of you guys would be doing if you were going to repaint a drill press anyway. So uh, I think I used about three, three and a half cans of this champagne mist on this drill press. I couldn't find it locally anywhere here in Georgia, so I had to order it online and I had to order a six pack of it. And this is the table. And I'm painting this side of the table first because 
I can lay the table upside down on the mast off area for the surface and don't have to worry about marring it up. So this is now probably three more days later and I'm going to go ahead and mask off the nose section on the head casting. If you recall, I went ahead and kind of defined that nose a little bit more down towards the end with a uh, file. And that's so that this part is easier. And it looks better once it's done. So unfortunately, because we're only going to be painting the area where the headband goes and the nose, everything else on the head has to get masked off. Which is a lot of work. Now the reason why I'm waiting three days before I start doing this is because I don't want to have any possibility that the masking tape is going to pull off any of that champagne mist hammered on paint when I remove the masking. So I made sure that it was really well cured before I masked it. And on this drill press, the only other part that's going to get masked for a second color is the, is the floor base. So the table on the floor base, I don't know why, because tables on bench tops the table surface that's on a base for the bench top is usually not painted. But on a floor drill press, the floor base table surface is almost always painted. Well, so since I'm using two different colors here, I'm going to paint that area, that second color as well. And that's it masked up. So the second color that we're going to use is a hammered metallic black by rust -Oleum as well. Whenever I'm working with spray paints, I try to stick with the same brand for the primer and the paint and any additional colors. And if I was going to clear coat any of this later on, I'd use a rust -Oleum clear coat as well. I found that if you mix some of these paints like Rust-Oleum and Krylon or whatever, uh, you can get some pretty bad results, orange peel and that kind of stuff. And the only other paint that I use with Rust-Oleum on occasion is the Ace Hardware brand paint. But like I said, typically I'll stick with the same brand for all the paint. My my trigger finger was worn the hell out, so now I'm doing just <laughs> trying to get it with my thumb. And then I'm back to the trigger finger because I can't control the can as well. So we're going to let that sit for probably about an hour. And then we'll come back and remove that masking. Remember I said I don't want to leave the masking on there for a long period of time. And I did remove the masking for all the other parts that got just that one coat of paint. But uh, for this video and for chronological sake, I guess, uh, all that masking will be re revealed here in a minute after, after I pull off the masking for the base and the head unit. But, uh, and this is the head unit. No big, nothing exciting to see here. It's just pulling off the tape without removing any paint. And the black is still, it's it's dried for a bit, so it, it should be dry to the touch, but I'm still not going to touch it. And I'm just pulling all the masking out of the bores. But that. I like that color contrast, the black with that champagne mist. Looks good.
And if you forget to pull the masking out of one of these bores, you'll you'll know it when you go to try to put parts inside those bores. Ask me how I know. So this, like I said, all this masking was pulled off about an hour after that champagne mist was uh, shot on there. But I just stuck it in here after the... Uh, the second paint coat so that you could see that I did pull the masking off of it, but it was pulled off earlier. That X-Acto knife really makes that easier than... Uh, trying to get it with your fingernail. And this is the table. That's the boss for the lock pin. And this is the table surface. And these are the bores for the table support. And thank God removing the masking is way easier than putting it in there. So as I finish this table off, that is going to finish this video off. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. And I think next we get into assembly. Um, so that'll be fun. And uh, we should be able to finish this series up in probably eight videos. Just depends on how well that assembly goes. But... As always, I appreciate the support. If you got any comments, leave them down in the comments section. I try to answer those as they pop up. And as always, I will see you next time.